B ball status. B ball. For real. See? Here we go. Three. Right. I guess. Hold on, wait, wait. I guess I'm gonna be like, we're back again. <laughs> yeah. I got. I'll but we're not back. Hey, give me your, give me your, give me your. He's thing. back, but we're He's not. Oh, I'm now. back. You're back. not back though. Well, I'm yeah. here. Let me get you up. All right, right here. Relax, relax. Relax, relax. Right here, right here. You need to get up. Ooh. You don't fuck up my table. Hook me up. Hook me up. Make up. Make up. Make up. Hey, jump, jump. Right here. Quick, quick, quick. quick. Yeah, good. Give me a good. <laughs> Give me a good. We're back. This is episode I think nine because we've been doing this for a little a little while now. But we got back our guest from before, Mr. John Mora. Woo! Perfect, perfect. Nobody's here. That's right, <laughs> But the dude in the middle is who we wanted this this week and who we wanted here on this podcast because I think this dude is just the way he carries himself and what he had to go through is insane. But this is Mr. Ruben Mora. Really quick, we're back. Really quick. I mean, we've been talking off of camera, already having our conversations that were just million dollar conversations already. But we're going to put this on here for everybody that's watching. You know, we got over 100 subscribers, which is great. I appreciate everybody. But we're going to get right into it. Like, this dude, he may look dirty, but he actually is what? Ah, come on. Now. All right. I'm barely, 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 barely 25. 20. I just turned 25. I'm a leap year. So we're all in, 29. We're all in the, in the same age group, right? 25? Pretty much. Yeah. 25, 25. You're 25. Yeah. You're 25 too? I'm 25. No, you're actually like six. No, I'm six. I'm, I'm leap year, so that guy, he, he's lying on his ID. He's not 25. He's old. <laughs> he looks like an Iceman. I'm fucking bring it out. I'm 25, homie. You look like you haven't gotten out the door in years, homie. Damn. Bro, I'm still 25. What okay. Anyways. You look like shit regardless. We're going to get right into it. So we, everybody knows... John is a trash man. He he picks up trash for a living and makes great money. <laughs> and he's but what is what nice. do you do? I'm a sanitation engineer. I'm not a trash man. I'm a sanitation engineer <laughs> and a fireman. I'm a yes. sanitation engineer. Yes. Sanitation. You want to downgrade engineer. yourself? Downgrade yourself. I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a sanitation <laughs> engineer. I work from I work from six to six, twelve hours a day, Monday to Friday. Tell me what uh, you do on a daily basis. Let me hear a big guy. Daily basis? Yeah. Okay. Really quick. 10 seconds. Go Real quick. Daily basis. Here we go. Wake up. 5.30. I'm up. Well, not really, but I'm, I'm staring my eyes. 5.30. I'm up. I get to work at 6.15. You know, I start my truck, get ready, hit the route, do all my, do my stops. I'm dumping midday. Go back, and then I fill it up again. Here we go again, and I dump, and that's it. You know, I, I just basically I kind of sorry to say this, but I sit on my ass all day, pretty much. <laughs> but um, I mean, that, that that's basically what I do. You know, I you're just, I, you're just cleaning I, up the city one day. I'm a time, sanitation huh? engineer. Don't worry about that, big guy. So and let's let's jump right into it, since. But you we, know what? Hold on, wait. Oh, oh, oh. There's a negative connotation around this this subject, though. People people what? don't like that. Like how you said before, how a trash man and your you know pest control people don't like that. They look down on us. They look down on us. They look down on the. You gotta get. <laughs> it's a dirt. negative connotation, like I said. I mean, Ooh. right or no? Yeah, you're right for so sure. Then, and do you not agree? They, have you ever lied to anybody saying you don't that you? No, 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 no. But I'm people, the one I like, done. like when when you what and we grew up. I, I, say, I would say I in the same up time. The city one day at a time, big guy. No, but when, when <laughs> no, but, but the younger <laughs> generation when, when, when you're, you're yeah. when you're growing up, nobody ever says I want to be a trash man for a living. No, no one does, ever does. Man. Right? I, 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 I never heard it. I don't say it till this day. I mean, who does? But I mean, it pays the bills. It it, it gets you I in mean, positions, hell right? Yeah. I mean, look, there's people who I know that have gone to college for four, four plus years, six years, Facts. come out of school, and they don't make anywhere near what I make now because they need experience, they need this, they need that. Isn't that what we talked about too when we had you about going to school, right? I mean, I wasn't here. 
Not, but well, with him, right, when we talked about school and everything, like, again, and, and it's not to knock off people going to school. No, if you go to school, like have a plan. But when, and I think that's a big thing about literally working and grinding. Like, a yeah. lot of people don't want to do, I would say, dirty jobs in a sense because yeah. they don't want to get their fingernails broken yeah. doing doing a hands-on job, like, that's where it starts, right? No, no, of course. No, yeah, I mean, that's that's how I started. I mean, I, I never would have thought, but now what I make now and I compare to people who I know from college, or not college, sorry. That went school, to college. Went yeah. to college, yeah, from high school. And I know, and then, like, they're now my age, and they graduated with a four-year degree, and they don't even make nowhere near what I make. I'm like, how, you know, like... How does that make sense? How, how, how does that correlate to what I make? You know, like, the, you spend all that time... And you're not now. You're in debt, also. Though you have to think about that. You're in debt now. Most people don't have that money. Whatever, to pay. whatever yeah. you're making, <laughs> you gotta yeah. pay off what yeah. you just spent. Definitely. Now you're in debt, so now you have to think about you have to pay that, and then you have to make a living. You have to rank up. You know, it's just you know, not not like you said, not to bash on it, but I mean, if I could look back, like when I graduated high school, I I did have classes to go to to a community college, Same. and uh, I, I I never showed up to be honest. Yeah. I turned eighteen. I graduated. And uh, I actually had three classes for Citrus College, and I, I just didn't show up. I didn't I didn't pay. I didn't I knew, I just didn't show up. No show, no go. That, and I just started working. How I always tell like I tell this story like I I tell the kids that that I that I coach and younger and and my boys like bro like I went to community college, and at the end of the day like when you're working and you're really just grinding the hours and being yeah. there. There's sometimes, like, it just comes through your head, like, you know what? School isn't going for me. Yeah. I got to keep working because that's all I know, and I'll make it. Yeah. But there's cer- certain people that find the job, and it's just a dead end. But, like, knowing John for a while, and, and re- I would say recently meeting you last year, like, people grind to an extent. No, and no. you got to be that it part that takes you to the next level. Where now, like, I would say all three of us, but say, hey, we don't need school to be where we're yeah. at because no, no, technically course, yeah. we didn't. Yeah. It, it, it taught us something. It taught me something. You know, he's been working since he was 17, right? Yeah. 17, 18? Barely. 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 Barely, Barely. like right out of high school. <laughs> it's only my third day out here. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but but it, I think that's like for, I would say, like the younger generation, the young viewers that, that watch us, that watch this channel. Yeah. Like, where they all get to that position because I was in that position just trying to figure out where you're going to go after high school because some, like, I got to get a job in high school. Some, I got to go to college yeah. to make it happen. And and some just don't have an idea what to do. And that was me because I applied at college yeah. to the top UCs that I thought I was going into. I, boom, to the point where I was course, like, yeah. dude, I got to go into the military just to make it out. I'm glad <laughs> I was <laughs> No, you're lost. And, yeah, and, you know, you're like, completely the, lost. The bad thing is that, like, you get out of uh, out of high school and you're you have all this pressure. Either you have to go to college or military to make something of yourself, but there's no in between. You know, there's no following your dreams. There's nothing. You know, but uh, it's just people put you in those two categories: either military or college. And I got this. I got this from my sister. Or dead end job. Yeah, or well, that's it. Yeah. Or the, or either it's either you go to college. Military or you end up at McDonald's, which isn't true, you know. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff. Like I have my commercial license, and uh, we we get into it later. But through my accident, I got my real estate license as well. So I have I have both licenses, you know. But uh, through my sister, I learned because she she's going to college right now for uh, what you going for for basically to be like a detective, I guess. I oh, guess you could say. Damn. Kind of like some cop organization thing to San Bernardino. Not exactly sure, but I was talking to her and I was telling her like, oh, like how much are you going to make after your four to six years? You know, she's like, oh, I'll make like 80, 80,000 starting. And I was like, what? Like, you know, like I make more than that now that, you know, like yeah. that, that wouldn't make sense, you know, like to go spend four to six years of your life to end up there. And then that's yeah. kind of your cap. Maybe it's honest. just, do you guys think but it's I mean, just I, that, I'm, I'm like title? I said, I'm not bashing it, but I mean, yeah. look. If I can go back, thinking about it now, I probably would go to school, I think you could say. I don't know. Because like, like, like how she tells me, she tells me straight up, you know, like, I have something that can back it up. I can get another job. What are you going to do once you lose your job? You know, like, yeah. 
I'm, I'm kind yeah, of. Yeah, at the end of the day, you're I never going to lose that. You're never going to lose your degree, you know. Yeah. I mean? So, but, 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 would you, but would you say but that? But I do have my license, so I could get another yeah. job with my commercial <clears throat> license. You but know? Be, besides the license, would would all of would both of you say me asking? Is it just the what you would call that quote, quote unquote that it part in you that says, hey, if I lost this job. I'm not going to sit on my ass and get an employment, you know, not oh, bashing hell, anybody, but I'm going to go find something that's going to try to equal that same thing. Mm-hmm. And if it's not like I've got to move on to the next, because again, there, yeah. there's unfortunately the generation that happen, like there's some that get too sensitive to what's happening. And then there's others that, Hey, we got no other option. And there's others that, that just say, hey, I'm okay where I'm at because that's you how I'm more. You get comfortable. Like, that, that's a problem. Like you, big, like how we said, <laughs> with him, you had to move on from what you're already working at to get to where you're at now, and you're still not done. Yeah. Did you have to do that yourself? Well, I mean, I kind of, look, I have, I've had jobs since I was, what, seven years old. I mean, like, I had... Um, Chores don't count, Dave. <laughs> Not what your parents said they were counting. <laughs> no, look, my my learning started early. My dad told me I had to work for my money since since the get go. You know, like for sure. no matter what, anywhere. Like I never had an allowance. Like oh, here's ten dollars for not doing shit. You know, never. I never had that. I would always work for my money. So um, we used to live on a street, Laxford, and we used to have. I used to live in the back house. I used to have family in the front, back. I used to have like it was six houses basically with family on the whole street. Jesus. So yeah, so my grandpa had uh, goats, horses, everything. At it. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see my story. Don't worry about that, nigga. You don't worry we'll bring that up right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, wait. Bring up what? The, you no. think it's the Lena Street or what? Relax. <laughs> for the fuck, man. Hey, shout out. Are you are you doing a shout out to your primos right now, yeah, dick? Hey, fuck no, Lena. Yeah. <laughs> That's all about relax, boy. <laughs> the Tuesday ain't got nothing on bowling, homie. You better relax, big guy. He's a little too, so take it easy there, big guy. You did. So look, take it out. Take Anyways. it out. So uh, we have like, it was like six houses in that whole block. It was all family. Uh, Tia's, Tio's, my grandpa, everybody. You know, my grandpa had uh, goats and uh, my my dad has had his horses there at the, at the time. And uh, I used to go every day to school. This is before fifth grade. I used to go, shovel, poop, give him fucking hay, everything, you know. And I used to get like ten, twenty dollars a day, and I know you felt you felt like the man, you know. At that point, yeah, you had lunch money. You used to go to school, you know. <laughs> you want buy, chips? I got chips. Hell yeah! Don't worry about that. Hell yeah! You used to go buy cheeses and a <laughs> Pepsi, and be like, "Damn, like where'd you get that dollar from?" You know? <laughs> no, it, it feels good, you know. Like that, yeah. that's different, what I learned. Different times, man. No, different yeah. times for no, sure. Yeah. That's exactly where I learned. You know, like you have to work for your money, you know, and and that evolved from. From that to in middle school, I used to, uh, my grandpa had his own gardening business. And um, so he had his, his own garden. So during the summers when I wasn't in, in school, I used to go do gardening with him. And uh, it was funny because he had a lot of routes in Covina, which was where my school was at. And I was super embarrassed because, you know, that I'm doing gardening work, but, you know, that's not the cool thing, I guess you could say. Yeah. So we would do gardening work and, um, People in summer school would see me. I'm like, fuck, and I would put my hat down, and I would, I would hide. <laughs> Swear to God, in the yards, I used to go in the front. I'm like, fuck, and I used to, I used to hide in the, you know, because I didn't want to be seen cutting yards. You know, that that's not cool at the time. But, how you said earlier. Well, hey, now you think about it, you're like, one. yeah, you think about it, you're like, like that's that's nothing compared to what everything else is in life. You know, it's, it's, but at the time, your life is. Uh, I guess so, like narrow vision, you know. Yeah. That's all you see. You worry about you know? what others say at you, that point. Yeah, you worried about sure. your your perspective and everything. So. Yeah, it, it's crazy because like you're saying that, and when I was growing up, and I mean it's not it wasn't here, but it was in Santa Maria up yeah. north. Like on, I would spend like two weeks out there, but on the weekend we would go cut yards with my Nino. Like, <laughs> hey, you want twenty dollars for the weekend? Here we go. Yeah, and it, me and my cousin are just boom, going, going, going. But how like you said before it was looked down upon because it's yeah. like, man, you're doing that or you're doing this. Yeah. Now it's just like you're hustling, who, you're like, making money. Yeah, exactly. But at the same time, it's like, who cares what you say? Yeah. Like I think right now what's what's happening in this timeline, not just generation, just timeline is we worry about too much of what social media is about to tell you. Yeah. To verify you. Like, again, I kill if you want to make it simple, I kill rats yeah. and roaches. You guys get trapped. 
Hey man, we sanitation we're sanitation engineer. Sanitation engineer, but we're <laughs> but, but we're able to be where we're at and we're able to no, live how course, we live. Yeah. I, I, but I, it's I, always it. Let's take it to this part. Do you think it just depends on who you are as a person? I I, I would I would say so. But look, at the time you're blinded though because. Now I look back and I'm like, why was I hiding? You know, I would, that was just a job. You're like, what's what's the bad thing about a job? You know, but if I put myself in the shoes that I was in back when I was in sixth, seventh, eighth grade, it would be different. Yeah, I would be like, hell no, like, like I like I'm putting myself in the shoes right now. Like I, I would hide literally. Like yeah. I would see people going to summer school because I would cut yards in front of my school yeah. and I would see my friends walking. Two summers ago, I'm like, fuck. So, so let's I would literally turn off the machina. Yeah. Turn it off and run to the back. And, and my grandpa would be like, hey, don't know us. I'm like, no, what's atrás? And then he'll be like, he'll be like, no, 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 <laughs> vamos, vamos. And I'm like, fuck. Like, if you only knew, like, I was embarrassed to tell him that I was embarrassed to work for him because that's disrespectful for him, you know? So I would uh, I would, I would hold it back, you know? Like, I, but yeah. in my in myself, I was embarrassed to cut yards. For, for money, you know, and, I, and I think that was when I was young. What So let's go to that. Do you think social media nowadays just plays that big part oh, in people's hell lives? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe for the hell younger crowd, yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. Right? Like, do you really... that growing up. And we were, social media is like I, everything. I, I always say, like, if I was younger and I, and, I, and I would think the way I think now is just like, I would be a whole different... Oh, group. of course. I was just thinking too, like, I, like how I'm telling you that if I was cutting yards... With my mentality at my age right now, I wouldn't give a shit. I'd be like, you know what? I'm making money. I don't care. Yeah. Like I'm, you're you're going to school, studying because you didn't pass your classes. Yeah. When I'm making money at the same time, you know, and I'm still gonna have the same classes as you when I go back for sure. in the spring or yeah. or summer after summer, you know. I think we we care too much about like I had to go through that phase, but we care too much about what the next person is doing. Yeah. For me to be there, like when we're like yourself. so this is I would say sixth grade. Maybe you guys remember when the hurricanes were out, Fifty Cent shoes. Yeah. 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 That was the game. Oh, oh, oh sorry, the game. Hey, hey, hey. What about Fubu? That was the game. I didn't wear Fubu. I didn't wear Fubu. No Fubu? But, I wore Shine Yard. But, but, but it was like, bro, like, <laughs> we I was going to Burlington buying Fubu. Oh, I had Sean John. Sean John. Sean John was a shit. I, I thought I had hurricanes. I thought I was a shit. Like, that was the game. Know, like, we went to elementary where we had to wear uniforms. It was like, all right, I got the fresh shoes, though. <laughs> but it was just like, now thinking of what, like, how we are now is just like, well, that all costed money. What did it cost my parents to go through that? Oh, of course. Yeah. Like, I think now we, we, we forget what our parents had to do. Like we remember it, yeah. but now the generation is just like, hey, there's four hundred dollars shoes. I want them. Go get them. It's like, wait, bro. Because like, that, that that's the thing. Like, yeah, fuck? yeah. Like but not even a day. No, yeah, you would but, be like, God damn. Like yeah. not even us. That that you would say, have it better. Be like, well, yeah. why do I gotta do that? Well, I just literally had this conversation with my dad yesterday. We had, we were having dinner, and um, he was talking about how he came from Mexico, and he had the same. Red pants. He was my age, going to the same high school I went, Glassman High School, and he had red oh, pants. You don't know what the hell. Chapas. Relax, big guy. Chapas. Chapas. We went to CIF, so relax. Hey. Fuck both you guys up. For what? Football. <laughs> I was on the team, but relax, big guy. All right, well, that's another one. That's another way. Hold on, hold on, no, no, hey, but for us, my my dad literally was he was telling me how he came from Mexico and he had the he had the same red pants that he would milk cows in, and he would go to Glassman High School, and you know it's a whole different ass off from Mexico to here, you know. So he was just lost, you know, like you know, embarrassed at the point, you know, like now he thinks about it now, like you know, like fuck, you know, like that was just my moment in life, you know, like. You think about it in, in retrospect, and it's not that big of a deal, but when you're in the moment, you're like, fuck, this is Different. like your biggest moment in life when it's really not, you know? I think There's that, so much more in life than to what you're thinking of at the moment. So, let, let's, so let's get into it. So what was the mental change that you had to go through to like really think about this and really grow as a person, yeah. right? Because you got to go through certain shit. Like no, John, John was here, and he talked about when it work and, and near-death experiences and it was like different and I yeah. know he's not as sensitive like how as I am like I put it out there but like you was there certain things that you had to just go through unfortunately because life just happened yeah. that just changed how the way you thought 
No, of course, yeah. I went through through this. Who sing this? I, uh, I unfortunately lost my arm. Who is? Me my boy. I lost my arm back in uh, actually the week of that we're recording this. Um, March third, twenty eighteen. I, I I lost my arm for uh, on my March third birthday. No, 20, yeah, 22nd, yeah, 3, yeah. Well, 22nd birthday uh, for in Puerto Pañasco. And um, it was a gang of us. It was cousins, friends. It was um, all kinds of us. Was, I think it was like, what, 15 of us, I want to say? It was a bunch of us. We rented a van. Yeah. Rented a van, went to Puerto Pañasco. It was cool, so... Um, yeah, we're on the way. Everything was cool. You know, we we're drinking, whatever. We went to Puerto Mayasco. We got to the house. Everything unpacked our stuff. You know, this was on a Friday. And uh, we had fun. Come Saturday, we had a plan to where we're going to get uh, Banda and stuff to have fun that Saturday morning. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we planned that all out. It's come Saturday morning. We got Banda. We're having fun. Uh, everybody's drinking, you know. I'm not gonna lie, a little excess drinking, you know. Maybe got a little too far. <laughs> <laughs> There's no such thing as too far. Uh, no more the story. <laughs> but um, yeah, we were drinking all day, and we had the the plan, you know. Like, but I, I think as a Friday, we had the plan to go uh, rent razors in the Malecon in Puerto Pañasco. So we're like, oh, let's go rent razors, you know, isn't that? Banda ended us probably around 12, 1 in the afternoon around there. Uh, so we left. We got in the van. We drove to the Malecon. We seen the, the razor spaces. And we're like, oh, let's get the razor, you know? So we hopped in the razor. We got a four-seater razor. It was me, my girl, my cousin Andres, and another friend. It was four of us in the razor. And uh, I think, I want to say we rented three of them. Yeah, it was, it was three razors we rented. So I, that was four of us. Me, my girl, my cousin, and a friend of ours was in one of them. And, uh, yeah, we took off. Us three. We took off in the Malecon. We're going around this and that. And uh, I took a turn. And uh, I guess I was going too fast. And I, I, I took it. Freak accident. Turned and flipped over, like, just once. Just literally go like this. No, turn the right turn. So I was, I was going like this. Boom. And it just flipped. Just on its side, I was driving, and uh, just natural, you no know, natural reaction. You know, you when uh, when it flips over, you want to grab something. Obviously, you know, you want to like yeah. hold on. This arm, I guess, flew out and it landed on the roll cage. So my arm was pinned up on the roll cage, and um, so we were like this. My girl was right here on the, on top of me, basically. Good thing, good thing we had our seatbelts on because I mean, if imagine yeah. that, I mean, we would have. My, probably in my head, you know? The worst. And uh, my cousin and our friend was in the back. We're all just flipped over. And I remember just being on top. And um, so the, the weird thing is, I, I unbuckled my seatbelt. We unbuckled our seatbelts and they all fell, you know? Boom, boom, they all, because the car was sideways. Yeah. And I tried getting up. I, I tried pushing up. And I, I was like, fuck, I was like, my arm's broken, my arm's broken. And then they're like, no, it's not, no, it's not. Like, you're probably just burying the sand because it was sand. I was like, no, I, I, think, it's, I think it's broken. I was like, well, hold on. So then the other, my other cousin stopped another razor, flipped over my razor, and I got the show to see, you know, like, my arm was mangled. It was hanging on by a thread of skin. If that, it was Jesus. just, it was barely hanging on. I seen it, and I was like, holy shit. I was like, that's it like I'm done you know and I it was severed to the point where I couldn't move it you know like it was it was literally hanging on by a thread like nothing so I grabbed it and I, I put it right here and I was like fuck I was like it's done you know like this gonna chop out like, oh, like no no don't worry about it you know, and, you know trying to be supportive you know like yeah. don't worry trying about it keep your head like yeah of course yeah, yeah yeah which so uh, that all happened and we're right there and then uh, they called the ambulance and they called the cops Cops showed up in Mexico, as corrupt as they are. <laughs> they literally show up. Hold on. They tried taking me to jail for DUI because I was drinking and driving, supposedly. Which, I mean, I was, but... <laughs> my arm's hanging on my thread, and they started taking me to jail. Then we had to pay them off for me not to take them to jail. For, me, for them not to take me to jail, basically, you know? 
And they're like, what the hell? Like, do you not see his arm? Like, his arm's yeah. falling out. Like, everybody's telling him, like, you know what the hell? So at the time, I was, I was bleeding out a lot. So uh, my girl, she, uh, she's not like, she was in uh, medical school at, at the time. Well, she still is, but she's going to graduate. Super proud of her. Congratulations. Yeah, she's, she's Congratulations. graduating in June. There it is. Put up your cheers. Marlene, cheers. Congratulations. cheers. Congratulations. She's graduating in June, so she's had to residency soon. But thanks to her, honestly, she really did save my life. Um, she uh, she took my cousin's shirt off. He had a tank top, and she's like, give me your shirt. Like, let me tie let me tie his arm off. Tied my arm off to, to stop the bleeding, at least. And... Uh, yeah, at that point, I kind of was kind of like a blur after that. But I remember ambulances uh, showing up, and they threw a uh, iodine, you know that that red thing. Yeah. God damn! I didn't feel the pain from the arm, but when they threw that that iodine, woo! That shit was spicy. <laughs> like the sriracha, my arm. That shit was hurting. And uh, yeah, I, after that, we went to the to the clinic out there in Mexico. We were in the clinic, and I remember I had I had a brand new Air Force. Uh, I think uh, they were Air Force, Air Force Max. I don't know what the hell they were. Point is, I had brand new Nikes, brand new Nikes. <laughs> I'm in the hospital, and they they hit me with morphine, all this and that, to stabilize me because you know I was losing a lot of blood. I was panicking this and that. They stabilized me, and um, I woke up. Pause. All right, so we took a small little break because the primo was a little dry throw, a little, you know. It's not COVID, little. though. <laughs> Relax. Relax, <laughs> everybody out there. We, we've been tested. We're good. Uh, we ended right right before this. You know, you were back in the hospital. You were talking about your, your Air Maxes. That you Air Maxes. Got. Ooh, there you go. So they jacked. They got jacked by <laughs> the people there. In Mexico. <laughs> well, but, almost. So... Let me, let me <laughs> recover. Re- 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 right. Give me some. Let, let, let me let me get into it. So you got pinned when you got the news that you were losing your arm or you lost your arm. What went through your head? Well, at that moment, it was it was surreal. I mean, I, there was so much adrenaline that was going through me. Like I, I couldn't process it till literally till I got back to the U.S. That when I got to Phoenix at the trauma center, that, that's when I realized. Like, that's it, you know? Like, I'm losing my left arm. Like, that. that Because, not to bash Mexico, but I, I, I didn't trust them. I didn't I didn't want anything to do with them. I didn't want any surgery there. Nothing. So, I told them, you know, I have I have U.S. Uh, insurance. Like, I'm not trying to do any anything here, you know? Like, just keep me stable and just ship me back to the U.S. And, that, and that's basically what they did, you know? Like, they kept me stable. But it took them... Five hours, six hours to keep me stable in Mexico. So I was in Mexico for six hours with my arm basically detached. It yeah. was just, it was just there, you know. And um, at the time, back to the Air Max story. So I had my brand new Air Maxes, and uh, my girl walked in. She's like, "Where's your shoes?" And I was like, "I was like, I don't, I don't know. Like, I don't think I knocked my shoes off when I when I rolled over." And uh, so she asked the doctor. And the doctors are like, oh, pues no sé, no, 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 no sé qué this and that, whatever. Long story short, she walks down a hallway. And what she told me, she's walking in the hallway and she sees my Air Max is like through a creek, you know, like the little crack of the door, you know. Yeah. And it's in a closet. So my Air Maxes are stashed in a closet, you know, like for them to wear. And she's like, what the hell? She's choking the door, got to my Air Maxes. And she, and she took them out to the doctor and she's like, well, what are these? You know, like these are his Air Maxes. Like, why? Why, why weren't they on him, you know? Oh, and the doctor, like, panics. Oh, but don't say this and that, whatever. So, they were trying to take my Air Maxes. Like, that, that's how corrupt Like, like forget your own <laughs> yeah, Air Maxes. Yeah, like, like, these are two hundred dollars shoes. Like, fuck this motherfucker. So, we, I put my shoes on. Doom, doom. Put them on. And, uh, yeah, but my, my girl was like, you know, we got to leave this hospital. Because it wasn't even a hospital. It was a clinic. It was like... yeah. It was just four walls with the bed and fucking yeah. IV dripping. You, you you knew it wasn't gonna be. No, it, was, it, 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 it wasn't gonna, gonna gonna It wasn't going to care for you the way you knew oh, you needed it. No, no, of course not. No, that was that was nothing near. I was I was just there, like what they told me was just to stabilize me because I was losing, I was losing a lot of blood, and uh, it was just all kinds of stuff. So 
I was just there basically to stabilize me, and then from there I was gonna get transported to an ambulance yeah. to the border, so Arizona Mexico border, and that's what they did. You know, I was there, and um, I remember being in the ambulance. I remember I knocked out. And I woke up and I was in the ambulance and I was they were jamming down the down the highway. I remember I was bouncing. I was I was on the on the on the ambulance bed and I was just boom boom. I was just jumping, you know. And I woke up and I told him, primo, cómo estás? And he's like, he's like no, primo, duermate. The guy told me he's like, primo, duermate. <laughs> swear to God, swear to God. And I was just jumping and I was, I was literally holding on my right arm on, onto the to the ambulance bit because you know Mexico roads are yeah. jacked up, you know. And dude, I was flying. I was like boom, boom, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, it was the like, funniest shit ever. It's and, <laughs> that's the crazy part. Uh, well, the whole crazy part because of what you're saying, you know, losing your arm. Like yeah. I remember, it was shit. I think it was only a couple months when I. I would say reconciliated with John in the gym. Yeah. And I remember, like, his face expression went from being happy and fucking around at the gym and messing around at the gym to, like, just blank. He was like, oh, my cousin got an accident. Oh, you guys were together at the time? No, yeah. So we were at the gym, and the first phone call I, I had was from your dad. And I was like, I looked at my phone, and I was like, Ruben. I was like, what the Why fuck? is he calling me? Yeah, yeah, I was like, Ruben, like, I, you know, I don't talk to him on a daily basis. For your dad to call me, it was because he needed, he needed something, something, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I answered, and he was like, hey, come on, this cabron. He was like, hey, come on, the gordos. And I was like, no, oh, pues no sé, like, bien. And he's like, no, pues que le llevaron la ambulancia, like, que pasó? And I was like, what the fuck? I was like, no, well, I'm here in Walnut at the gym. Like, I didn't go with them, you know? Yeah. And he was like, kind of like shrugging. He was like, "What the fuck? Like, you're not out there with them?" And I was like, "No, like, I'm fucking here. You know, I'm like 20 minutes away from you." He's like, "Oh, pues no sé, fue un accidente, no sé qué, me lo llevaron a la ambulancia." And I'm like, "Oh but, shit, well, I don't know." But, and the first thing that came to mind, I was just like, "Oh, this fool was drunk on the horse. He ate shit. He did something, you know." Nah, yeah, I didn't yeah. pay too no much mind. I was like, "All right, whatever." The phone call ended. That happened, we kept going, I was like, that's cool, my uncle, he's tripping about his son, whatever, supposedly they took him an ambulance, I'm like, this fool was just something stupid, you know, birthday weekend, this was acting a fool, you know? So whatever, we're going, we work out, and like 40 minutes later, I get another phone call, and this fool was like, hey, it's gordos, they're gonna amputate his arm, and I'm like, what the fuck? And I was like, what? And like, I had him repeat it again, and he was like telling me, and I was just like, Dog, like, I don't know what the fuck to say. Like, I don't know what to say to you. Like, like, what, like what the fuck do you say? So, yeah, you like, know, like so, how do I come for you? Like, your son's gonna go through, like, he hasn't even had his arm amputated. Like, I don't know what the surgery is like. And I'm like, yeah. He's telling me they're gonna have to cut it off. And I'm just like, dude, like, I'm sorry. Like, so, like, but, what do I say? What do I do? Like, what could I do, you know, like, to come for you? Like, I don't know. And he was all like, no, but I see pasan las cosas, está bien, you know, like, I'll talk to you later. Yeah. And he hung up the phone. And I'm just like, yo, what the fuck? So this shit's going on. I'm tripping the hell out. And I call my mom right away. And she was like, dude, I'm on the way to pick up your uncle. Because they well, she like, went your mom away. Yeah. Yeah. Like, she was like, I'm ready. Yeah. Your dad's fucking calling out work tomorrow. We're already on the way to pick up Ruben. Like, we're heading to Arizona. I'm like, dude, that, like, that well, was, I'm at the gym. Part. And she was like, dude, we're not waiting. Like, I'm taking off. And I was like, fuck. Like, all right, well, let me know if anything happens, you know? Yeah. So, I, I, so, again, and... The podcast I listened to uh, last week, well, actually on Monday, and I repeated it because it was good conversations about how men carry themselves in certain situations. So that one's different because it's losing somebody. Yeah. But, you know, you're talking about familia when something traumatic happens. Yeah. Us as men, how do you comfort yourself or each other when, like, something, you know, at this extreme, like, you can't come in and be like, hey, like, I'm so sorry, man. Let me give you a hug. Usually, I'm, as as men and as guys, yeah. like you don't do that because it's not it's the weird. It, it's weird. It's not yeah, the manly yeah. thing to do because, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I've known you. I think when your sister was like two years ago, the 15. Yeah. Yeah, and that's when like I first. Wait, hold on. You were there, shut up, stupid. No, I was there, but you, yeah. that's when you met him. That's the first. No, that's the first oh. time I met you. You and yeah, I, we met each other. 
as a far because you were like dancing and like I was just like well at that point that's yeah. what I already had in my arm right yeah 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 and and, yeah. and, and so what I want to get to is just like well you, go, you go go back to that as far as men deal with uh, with emotions you know like how do you go through it me I mean I don't know that would be a question for him because me, me personally like you one of that like before we like. You're you one mean, like I've never yeah. told you, you're one of them and I've told him I told John the last time we were here off the of camera you're one of the most happiest oh, yeah. human beings I ever met in my life with one of the most traumatic things that've yeah. ever happened no, 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 yeah. how do you carry yourself in that sense I mean I, I've, I've always I've always been that person always I've always been the person to be to make the fun to do this to that like every every time me oh like am I Ruben to you know let's let's do this and do that you know like yeah I've always been that person, you know, like, after this accident, it made me do it more, you know, like, you realize how, how, like, short life, not, not short life is, but how fast it is, like, you know, people say, like, your life can be gone in a second. When that happens to me, like, oh, fuck, you know, like, it actually is true, like, in a second, your life can change like that. Yeah. And that's what happened to me, like, it literally happened in a fucking second. I flipped it. The next thing I know, I'm licking down on my arm and it's fucking chopped off. And that's it. From there on to now, three years later, my whole life has fucking changed. It's a complete fucking 180. It's it's completely changed. But as like you said, as far as men reacting to um, emotions and stuff, I mean, I, I think I've always been a person to I, 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 I like to hold back everything. I like I, I don't like to put pressure on anybody. Like me personally, I like to take things to myself. I don't want anybody to feel bad for me. I don't want anybody to feel nothing for me. Have I, you I, ever I, have you ever let that out? Like so so what what I'm what yeah, I'm what I'm I mean, trying to get to is because when I I was going through some stuff a couple months ago and I put it out there in episode one if you haven't watched it, like he I literally had just to tell him, Hey, can we go eat? because you know, I'm not okay. And he just sat there and I'm just like, dude, like, I have everything and, not, and nothing's okay. Like, yeah. I got everything. Nothing's okay. You know, yeah. my, my girlfriend, Brittany, when I met her years, like, two, I think it was 2018 going to 2019. Uh-huh. I met her and I was like, look, I am mean, not okay. I don't want you to feel bad for me, but I'm just not okay. But yeah. just be there. Yeah, and yeah, that's yeah. what he did. He gave me that comfort to just be like, look, as men, I'm going to hear you me, out. Yeah. And I'll give you, and I'll give you mine. But there's a lot of times where people like just, yeah. yeah. There's a lot of times where people say, "Dude, I'm so sorry. I feel like I feel you don't feel yeah. me because no, you're not no, in, no. you're not me." People like that, I feel like they exaggerate. Yeah. I mean, me personally, like anybody who really, really knows me, I don't express any emotion. Like I, I like, I like, I don't like to be a burden to nobody, and and ex- especially people who really, really know me. I like to carry my emotions to myself, which sometimes is a burden to myself, to yeah. be honest. You know, there's times where it gets me like, fuck, you know, like, I wish I could release this. But I, I don't know. I just There's just something in me that just says, like, you know, like, this is my problems. I'm going to deal with them. I cause these problems. And this is me. Like, I'm, I'm doing it. And, and all, these, all these emotions that I feel is because of me. And I'm going to deal with it. And, that's it, you know. Like I'm gonna deal with it. No, I don't want to be a burden to nobody else, and that's my biggest thing. I don't, I don't want to be a burden. I don't want to be nothing to nobody. Like, yeah. I'd rather just reflect on my own. And I, I know what I did was bad. I know what I, I know what I do is good. And you know, I, I you know I'm, I'm con- not a bad person. You know so the consequences. Of course, I, yeah. I know everything. So, I mean, for me, for myself. I like to reflect on myself, to be honest. I, yeah. I like to hold everything in, and there's times where I can't hold it in, and there's, like, it's weird. Like, there's times where I'll, I'll watch, like, a, a movie or just something just dumb, you know, and yeah. it'll, it'll come out. Like, I'll start crying out of nowhere. That shit happens. I swear to God, I'm like, I'm like, what the hell? Like, like why am I tearing up for something so small? And I, and I do research, and, and I listen to podcasts and stuff like that. And it's just it's all this pent up emotion that I have, yeah. and I, I don't release because I'm I'm that kind of person that says you know what well, like I feel like I'm strong enough to to hold everything in, and, and that's just my thing, you know. Like, and I've always been that person, always, pig- I've always like been that literally picking back on what you said. Like again, the podcast I listened to yeah. this week, like 
I lost my, my grandpa a month ago and it was about like losing somebody and about mental health, about men. And he was like, I'm a seven, like mentally. I'm not a 10, 10 being perfect. I'm a seven yeah. where I'm still able to function. I'm able to work. I'm able to do what I got to do. But if I'm any lower than a seven, like I'm a three, I'm a five, it, it's tough. Yeah. But how he said it and I agree with it, I can't be that point because one, I got work. Me, I got a family now. Two, I got things to do because if, if, if I don't, if I'm not at least functionable, I don't know where I would be. Yeah. Like now, switching gears, like with with John, like how do you how do you approach <clears throat> being, I would say, sentimental to a man, like to to your brother, to your family, to a friend. Like I just called you out, like you were there for me. Now your cousin, like how do you? As like as men, I think we have that persona that hey, you you just tell hey be be good, you're you'll be okay. It's it's hard though. I mean, like you f- you're comfortable with the people you're comfortable with, but I'm exactly like him. Like I don't ever talk to anybody about how I feel or anything. Like he that. really don't. And just... I mean, honestly, it comes out at times with the people you're just comfortable with. Like yeah, I could be going through some shit and I'll never talk to anybody about anything like no matter who it is I just keep exactly. it to myself why because at the end of the day I feel like nobody gives a shit about how I feel and that's just me personally there might be a hundred people that care about me and stuff like that but I'm like just like I ain't gonna put this on nobody like I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna worry about me because nobody else is gonna give a fuck about me but that's just you know but that's, but just you think that, that's like me. that like that uh, well that that, that that point where a man thinks like, hey, no I one just cares feel about like me. I gotta, like, I gotta take care of of my own things. Like, if I can't, ha- if I can't take care of things of me, like, why am I gonna go to other people to try yeah. to fix things for me? Like that, you know, like yeah. if I can't figure it out, how are other people gonna fix it for me? But that, yeah. like, that's just me. But like, so would you go back to like your support system? Who you got on your back but checking never on you? Really, like, Dependent on nobody for support and you know, they like the, I don't know it's weird, bro. Because, it's it's like, true. Like I know I feel you because I, I me personally I can't do that either. Like I I can't like I don't know. Like I have you, but how many times have I ever gone to you for about anything? Like don't. it's very sudden. Like it's yeah. very rare that I ever go to you about anything. I I I think again, and it, and it's not. We're going to speak to the viewers, and I hope we've been make, we've been getting to you guys to this point because I I completely forgot we're recording this, but <laughs> <laughs> because we're just we got, yeah because we got we're going on this, but yeah, it, it, it it gets to the point where it's not just like the drinking part and making it fun how you everybody sees on videos, but yeah the last time me and him uh, John had the conversation and we really got to like tears is because we were drinking we got comfortable. And we hit that. Let everything out. We we hit that like point where it's just like, bro, let's hit the let's hit these topics that we've never talked about before, and let's hit them. I think me now, like everybody, everybody at first thought like, ah, oh, dude, gym dude, working, da da da, never. But it's like, no, man, we all got feelings, we all got emotions, and mental health is a big thing, and that's why when I say when I piggybacked off of John, I depended on John because. He was just there, like, hey, dude, like, how, how he said, like, as heartless as he is or un, unattached to his emotions, <laughs> he was just, he was that rock to be like, look, dude, this is, like, I feel you. This is what's happening. We got to get to this point. Just give you my perspective on things. But it, like, like how he, how he, Ruben is just saying, you know, like, it's just, we feel like we can't depend on anybody because I, I felt that before like hey you know what I'm gonna put all my emotions aside because I gotta take care of me first then I can take care of you yeah. and it and it affects everybody around you do you think that happened with you like did it affect people around <clears throat> you no no of course. I mean look me personally like I don't care what happens to me to be honest like I, I know me mentally I, I can handle anything like what happened to me like it, it's it's weird because I wanted I I wanted that that emotion that I've heard stories that oh I got this like it changed my life I got this you know like I never, I started doing this I started doing that like I never got that and yeah. I, I I wanted that like after that happened like I wanted that emotion like like 
let's change this completely, you know? And I, I didn't get that emotion. And I was mad. I was like, why Why didn't I get that emotion? Like, for example, like, stop drinking. Like, that happened because I was drinking, you know? Like, yeah. why, didn't I, why didn't I get that emotion? Like, stop drinking. Like, that's it, you know? Like, this happened because of this. And I, I, I just never received it. And um, I don't know. Like, to this day, like, I'm, I'm perfectly 100% fine with myself yeah. what hurt me was people around me like people around me i feel like people around me were hurting more than what i was hurting like especially my mom like i would see my mom and like like fuck you know like, i really messed her up after this like she literally left a party it was it was uh, a family friend's party and she had to get that call mid party imagine her being in victorville her son lost an arm in, in Arizona. Like, just imagine that five-hour drive, just thinking in her head, like, it's, her son could die. Her son could bleed out. Like, like so, I, I put myself in that shoes. I'm like, like, God damn. Like, it, it's, it's like so, just that whole drive. Imagine five hours driving, just contemplating, you know, like, just everything that could fucking ever happen. Like, not even that. Like, my dad, his mom went out. Like, his mom and your dad went out too. Did your dad go? Yeah, no. and I... And I they both yeah, went out because they, I feel like they went out because they, they didn't know what happened like, to him. So they could I got the to phone call. They were literally out there. Like as soon as I hung up the phone with your dad, like yeah. not even ten minutes after, they were on the way to pick up your dad to head out. And I'm like, yo, I'm at the gym. Like I want to go. Yeah. You know. And I, I was just like, fuck, I'm with him. Like I carpooled. And him. you didn't go. I would carpool. With him. <laughs> 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 you know. But yeah. But like, bro. Like going back to what you're saying. Like contesting. Like. Like you never changed the way he, like the way you were as a person, I and never, never fucking changed. And it tripped, like it tripped it, me out to it, this day. How he said it trips because him out. The, it trips like, me we out. We were at a party, at, what two, three months after your accident happened. We were at a party at Alito's house, Dick, and I remember someone oh, yeah. like saying a joke and say something, and like Dick was making fun of like your left arm and was like punching your left arm, Dick. And I remember, like, my heart dropped full and I fucking put my beard down because I wanted to I take... Remember that. I remember, that. I, remember that. I wanted to take flight on this fool. I was like, who the fuck that, does yeah, this fool yeah. think he is? Like, to make fun of you and say it, like, make a yeah. joke about it? Like, dang, I wanted to fucking light this fool up. And I remember, like, you just laughing and you going along with it. And I'm, like, tripping out. And I'm, like, looking at you and, like, what's wrong with this dude, eh? Like, yeah. this fool just lost his arm and he's, like... Still going about his life carelessly, how he's always got not carelessly, but like you know, like you just carry your persona with you. You're always like the jokes, or you're always like always got some funny to say. You always got some, you know, and like you just kept going that through, like it never skipped a beat. Like even though you like that traumatic accident happened to you, like you never changed. You were like everything just kept rolling through, and that that like tripped me out. I was like, bro, this fool's gonna be depressed and everything, and you were just like. Still no. you, you, so, so, doing so, everything you do. Again, that's, like, that's, so you would you would think, right? Because I I've told I've told, and I've told stories to my high school kids because it's just like, bro, like, I think this generation forgets about things that can happen in life. And I've told them my story really quick. So how you said the the drive with with your mom and your dad, his mom, you know, I had that drive when we had to go, you know, up north. With, with my family, I, I drove with my sister, I drove with my cousin up north when, um, unfortunately, my cousin, my, my uncle in 2015, you know, got his life uh, taken away by, by somebody, so it's just that that drive, which is a three hour drive, and it's like, I don't want to go, I don't want to make it. But you guys, you have the time going over there, right? It, it was the... It, I would so I was working at T-Mobile at the time, and we got that call like at three in the morning, and it was how he said it was a random call yeah. at two a.m. I mean, like who at, knows? I at one a.m. is like just crying and just like, hey, what's wrong? What's wrong? And boom, it just, hey, your your my my dear Jerry, I love you, rest in peace. Um, and it was just like, bro, all right. And it's weird because I got up from my bed when I was living at my mom's. I went to the kitchen. And crazy to think, my mom was already in the kitchen. Like, what's wrong? And I'm like, I can't tell you. Like, yeah. sense, like I can't tell you. But listen. And it was like, we're up all night. We said maybe one hour, two hours. The next morning, <clears> hey, I'm calling <throat> off work. But we're going. 
And on the drive there, like, I to this day, when I'm still doing that drive, an hour in, like, when I'm already hitting, like, 30 minutes before there, it's just, like... Going up north? Like, all right, I know. And unfortunately, the last time we went up there, um, burying my grandpa, it was the same emotion. But during that time, it was just, like, what do I do? What do I think? Yeah. Two weeks, like, in, it was, like, I'm blank. I don't know what to think. I don't know what to do. And that bit me until... Now, like when I had the conversation with John, and now that's why I bring the mental health to all these men, not just women, but men that think, hey, you got to put that persona, like, dude. Yeah. And that's why, like, and in, in, I'm saying this, not like, again, how you said, not to f- don't feel bad because no. what we had to go through. It's like, look, we got to go through shit, but look how we're going through it, no, and we're course. still yeah. making it. I mean, I, I mean, like, like you're saying, I mean, look, I, I go through shit. Day in and day out. I mean, I, I don't like it's like he said. I, I don't know if it's a genetic thing, but I hate showing. I, I hate people to feel what I feel. I, I don't. I don't want anybody to feel what I feel like. It's it, different. My my problems is my problems, and I want yeah. to do to myself. And that, that's and what I, I say, bro. No, that's I, exactly what I say. I, I had multiple people tell me like, go to therapy, go to therapy. Like, no, like I I don't know. I I just I don't want to bring anything to anybody. But myself, like, well, my issues is, well, now is because I, but my now problem here. is, I don't give a fuck. Well, I mean, I right? feel like people don't give a fuck about how you feel. But that's just me no, personally. No, no, no. I mean, me too. So I mean, therapy, maybe. I listen to someone you love. It's different. But I just feel like it's bullshit. They're there yeah. for a check. You know what I'm saying? So, I don't well, know. Just, and, therapy, and we, therapy, we all think the same. Therapy, me, myself, I've never done it. I probably never will. I mean. But, I mean, it, <laughs> it could be nice to just to talk to somebody. I mean, everybody's different. I mean, yeah. If I could unleash all my demons. On somebody, then yeah. they're probably gonna help. Yeah. But shit, <laughs> 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 oh, oh, no, I'm just kidding. No, but um, yeah, I don't know. Everybody who knows me personally, I keep everything in my mouth, and I've always been myself since day one, even after my accident. I can watch from that. Even after my accident, the the day after my accident, I have videos of me. In my accident, being myself, making jokes. Hey. If you want to see them. No, in the no, helicopter. No. Push it in aside. In the helicopter. Push it aside. Being I got, myself. After I get the fucking phone call from his dad saying that he's losing his arm, I'm like, fuck, I'm texting everybody that's out there that I know. And then I'm like, dude, I'm going to check this with Snap. I see his fucking Snap, and he's on a fucking Snapchat. And he's like, ya valió verga plebes, aquí andamos. And he's in the fucking helicopter, <laughs> fucking bandaged up like he's fucking 50 cents. Hey, and this guy's shot. But it, it, goes, it goes back, you know, we're going to take another. I don't know why. Look, but, look, oh, listen, 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 listen. We're, we're going to take, right I'll before. Take, I can take a video back. I we're we're going to take another another break because this is going on the longest one. You know, but, <laughs> like podcast. but listen. Honestly, you cannot take away who you are no, because you of can. a situation. There's no fucking way. It just brings it to light, Your right? Your brain is so fucking powerful. Pe- people don't understand how how powerful, like, just, just everything. You're like, your thoughts Sad. and your feelings and everything can overcome anything. Like, literally. It, it, it's literally. crazy. Like, it's that's literally. what I've learned, me personally. Your brain, like, they, they tell you, like, oh, it's only this and that, whatever. There's no fucking way in hell because what I've been through is been through fucking hell and I'm still here and I'm, st- I'm still and I still have the same yourself. humor I've had before I saw everything. So I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna say no it. Way in hell. I'm gonna say it because I think it was it was last year, the last year we were coaching before COVID. Um one of the one of the men mm-hmm. that I, I was very close to because of work, he had to go through a heart attack. To really shut him down, like lost half the, the feeling of his body. Paralysis and shit. But yeah, that same day that I got that that call because I went to that job site and they were like, "Hey, um, I don't know if you're too close, but this is what happened." Point is, I had his phone number already, and and I called his wife. And that same night, I coached. Then that hour after, I went to go see him in Compton. And just seeing him, it was just, his spirit was the same. Hey man, you know God got me here, and this, this is not a yeah. spiritual, but yeah. it was like God got me here, and I'm good. You guys are here, and it was just like, how do you do that, bro? How do you do that? But we'll bring that right back. Look, when we come to- back, I'll tell you the story when we get from the helicopter to the hospital. We'll get right back, <laughs> That's a good one. and we'll bring it right back. There it is. <laughs>
All right, we ended right now where Ruben. Where they're both yawning. Him and him. We took an I just found out. I just found out. We reviewed the tape. You're yawning and he's yawning. My uh, beer for 24 hours, big guy. What do you want me to do? 24 hour man. My story so, shit. My story let, shit. Let's get right to it. The mentality, what were your thoughts? You know, we just finished talking about my, my friend that um, had to go through a heart attack and seeing him spiritually and, and who he was was still the same. When you traveled from Arizona, from Mexico to Arizona, what was going through your head? How, how did you handle that transition? So. When I got transported from uh, Mexico to Arizona, I had a... There's a helicopter waiting for me. And trip on this, there was actually a girl who... Uh, she lost her leg from the thigh. At the same time, I lost my arm in Puerto Pañasco. So the the pilot told me, he's like, Hey, do you want to wait for her? You know, like, she's going to come in the plane too, this and that. And uh I don't, I don't. I really don't remember, but I don't think I had a say in it. But I remember people were saying like, "Oh, like, nah, let's just let's just leave now." You know, like we we, we might be able to save your arm. Like, let's just leave now. Point is, we left without her, which is kind of fucked up. But damn, that's <laughs> crazy. The helicopter took off without her, so I was. Uh, it took forty five minutes to get from the border to Phoenix to the trauma center. We got to the trauma center. They offloaded me. I got. I remember. I remember everything. I remember getting off the helicopter. I remember going. They're pushing me into the room. I get there. I meet my doctor for the day or the night. You know, whatever it was. And um, I remember I was just there, and it, everything just hit me at that point. I was like, like this is it. You know, like that. I lost my arm because my the people in the that I guess the ambulance workers in the the helicopter were telling me like you know like. You don't have blood pressure in your arm. Like, I remember, I remember my arm was still attached, but I remember pulling it up. Like, it was the weirdest feeling ever touching your fingers and with no sensation. It was like touching fucking Play Doh. Like, it was weird. Like, yeah. touching your own arm. Like, just touching it. Not feeling anything. And no sensation. It was just, it was, just, it was, it was trippy. I was like, I was like I, at that point, I knew that that was it. Like, it was just, it was turning, my fingers were turning like blue. Like, there was no, just, there was no circulation, obviously, you know? Yeah. So, again, it was, I get to the hospital, and I, I talk to my nurse or my doctor at the point, and I tell him, like, hey, is there any, is there any way to save my arm? Like, can you please save my arm? Like, I need it, you know? Like, yeah. I'm young. Can you please save it? And they told me, you know what? Uh, we're going to try this and that, whatever. And, and I, I literally had a serious conversation. I said, you know what? Please don't play any games with me. Just tell me exactly what's going to happen. Like, I don't want to know any games. Just just tell me what you're going to do. Like, I don't want to go to sleep with anesthesia and wake up with no arm when you guys told me you're going to try to save it. Like, if you're going to chop it off, just tell me fucking right now. Like, just tell me. And, yeah, the doctor, I remember the doctor and other nurses came over and they told me, you know what? We're better off just cutting it off. Like, you're better off not having an arm because at this point, if you're going to have an arm, if we were to attach it, First of all, you're gonna you're gonna risk gangrene, gangrene, staph infection. Your your wound has been open for over six hours. Not only that, my elbow was blown to pieces. It was like you fucking put a grenade on it. My my elbow was blown to pieces. My forearm was broken. My wrist was broken, and actually up here was broken too. So my arm is amputated right above my elbow. So like right here, but uh, it's actually broken up here too. And they were gonna amputate from all the way up here, and I told them if you if you can't like if you can possibly just avoid that, please like so that way I could have a uh, opportunity to have a prosthetic because the shorter it is, the harder it is to have a prosthetic. Yeah. And um, and yeah, they're like, okay, we'll, we'll try putting a plate in it, this and that, whatever. So yeah, they ended up putting a plate. So my first surgery was detaching my arm. Putting a plate, screws, titanium, this and that. So I have a, I have a metal plate from here to here. And um, the reason why I didn't want to do that was because I was risking more infection. Because they, I have a scar from here, like, all the way down. Like, it's, they, like they, they filleted my horn, basically, you know. Yeah. And, um, yeah, they did that. They sewed it back up. And I was in the bed for, like, two, three days with the, with the, with the vacuum seal. So, basically... 
it was a like a suction cup on the bottom of my arm like just pumping out all the bad bacteria this and that whatever for two days i believe i would yeah. say i was in the hospital for like eight days like a whole week you know seven eight days and um so that was all pumped out, and then I went for second surgery, which is to close everything up, and hopefully it closes at that point, you know? If it closes, then fuck it, it is what it is at that point. Yeah. And yeah, they closed it up, and they got stitches all the way down, I got stitches this way, it's like, it's like a big T. I think it was over 70 stitches, I want to say. Jesus. Easily. Yeah. Damn. And, um, yeah, then I was in the hospital for a week, and, um... I remember I was in the hospital and I was, I was lazy, you know, like my whole family went literally and I, I'm, I'm thankful for my family going, you know, my mom, my dad, my girlfriend was obviously there. My girl was there. Her, her mom actually flew out there from Drupal Valley, from California, all the way to Arizona just to see me. She was there. My, all my family from Arizona was there. I have aunts and uncles from Arizona. My grandma flew from Texas to go see me. His mom and dad went to go see me, like, because, yeah. you know, what, what they went through with him, they, they could probably relate with my mom, you know, like, you it's know, all that, all that trauma. For sure. So, um, yeah, they were all there, and it, that that's what really helped me a lot, you know, just having, like, a support system, you know, you know, just having them there. And um, I remember thinking, like, you know, like, I can't give up now, you know, like, everybody's here, like, how am I going to give up now, you know? So yeah. I have to keep on pushing forward. And, um, yeah, I mean, I, I got through everything. And I remember everybody left. And um, my girl was there. And she helped me She helped me take my first steps. After I was weak. It's crazy. You feel weak. Like, I was drained. And um, the doctor was telling me, like, you know, you got to walk. And I was like, ah. Yeah. You know, like, I don't know if I can walk. And I got pushed. My, my girl pushed me. She was like, you know, like, you have to walk. And. I ended up walking the whole hallway in the hospital, you know, running up and down. I came back and, um, yeah, you know, thanks to her, you know, like I, I, I accomplished a lot because of her, to be honest, she, she pushed me. But, um, after that, so I was there for about a week, seven, eight days, came back and, um, took a flight from Phoenix to back to California to Ontario airport. And it's crazy, the the altitude actually... So here's another thing. I have phantom limb pain. It's called phantom limb pain, which is irreversible. You can't... There's no cure for it. There's nothing. It's just... It's there. So my brain still sends signals to my arm. Like It, it still thinks my arm is there. So Like right now, I put my arm right here. Like I can still move my fingers. Like as we speak. <laughs> it's fucking crazy. So... They tried giving me a medication for that to to uh, contradict the the nerve pain that I was feeling because I couldn't sleep because at the time it was it was painful like my brain was just sending signals like nonstop and I was just like it was like you know you know when your uh, your arm falls asleep and you feel that yeah tingling part yeah shit, like that yeah. but like times times ten like if that yeah bad and I couldn't sleep nothing so that was a big thing but. Uh, yeah, I mean, they gave me all this medication. I, what was it going before this? Before all this medication? Shit. I mean, we've gone through... <laughs> through pretty much... Before every, that, though. I was, I, was going, I was going somewhere before that, though. With the... Uh, about everybody going to going to you. Whatever was there, yeah. About, like, not, giving, really about not giving up. You know, yeah. your lady was there. Yeah. You know? And, and so, you know, we, we've... I think we've, we've gone... And to the point where everybody's just at this point is just literally, I would say, interested in the final thoughts. Like, what would you would you say? Everybody thinks everybody goes through something bad, and I feel yeah. like we all have, in certain senses, in different life experiences. How do you carry yourselves individually? How do you carry yourselves from here on out after that? What would you tell somebody that's afraid that says, hey, you know what? Life effed me in this sense. Now I can't. Now I can't go. It's just like my my thing is just like, dude, there's always something worse that can happen to you. Oh, luckily, always. luckily it hasn't. There's a there's a way to figure it out. Keep going. 
Look, the best thing that helps me personally is like, like you said, there's always somebody in a worse position than you. Yes. Like you can go online and you see a guy with like fucking no two legs, one arm, and he's still fucking getting a, getting through life. You know, like so why can't I? You know. Yeah. Like I only I'm only missing one arm. You know. But there's people who are missing two legs, one arm, one leg, one arm, like, and they're still getting through life, you know, like, so why can't I, you know? Yeah. And you, you know, you know, you know what I see a lot is like, I see these, these young men, young, always, I'm at work and I pull up and always in Pasadena too, I'm at Pasadena a lot and I always pull up to like, I get off the freeway and I see these, uh, these young men, early twenties, homeless. Stand there, all good. I knew those, all fucked up, you know. I'm like, in my head, I'm like, fuck, like, how are you here? Like, I have one arm and I've accomplished a lot more than you. Like, why, why can't you? What's you know? the difference? Yeah, what's the difference? Well, I mean, I, I never got to the point of telling him that, but I, I get that. And I'm like, um, I'm just like, like, how, you know, like, if I could do it, anybody could do it. Like, if yeah. I could accomplish it, you could do it. Like, I have my commercial license. I got my real estate license too, like, not saying I use it a lot, but I have it there and it's ready to use, you know, like, but, um, that's just what throws me off, like, what young potential is just thrown away. They give up too easy. They give up either, I mean, I, I, I don't know their story, but that, that's what throws me off a lot, like, if I just got the truck and be like, look, I have one fucking arm and I'm driving an 18 wheeler, like, yeah. what's holding you back, you know? So, what, what would you say, like, the difference... From, from what you had to go through to now, hearing Ruben, personally hearing what he's going through, what would, what would you say? Like, you know what? I always say there's a brighter effing side to everything. No matter what you go through, you just got to keep going because there's a brighter side. What would you say, John? Fuck. That he's a faggot? <laughs> 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 no, I mean, there's always definitely something to look up to, you know. Whatever you're doing, just keep on pushing and keep doing you, you know, and something will come up. Whether it's something you like to do or something you just getting you by, getting you by, or something you know that just start fucking somewhere. falls in your path. Just keep, gotta start somewhere. Keep doing something. Just gotta keep Just pushing. Just don't sit around and expect for something to happen. That's the worst. Sit around and expect someone to, like a gypsy to pop up. Here's your opportunity. Yeah. Not possible. Well, shit. You gotta work for it. But shit, um, if, if if you have it, like, share, subscribe. I mean, I, I know we need for, a part two. Though. We're gonna have a part two because we we, got, yeah, we miss a lot. This is our the longest one we've had, and there's still more to say. A lot, oh, but but you gotta stay tuned because there's a lot more to say and a lot more for you guys to know. But I hope this got if you have heard this far, it hit you in a sense where there's more to go to and there's more things to do and there's more things to look forward to. But shit, with that, man, get your dreams because a fucking toast to life on that one, right? We got the fucking Terminator. Cheers. Yeah, cheers to life. We got a Terminator. Appreciate you guys. Stay cheers. tuned.